rullat i snart 30 år. Vi skriver samma skeende ur tre olika perspektiv. Welcome to the stage, Frank Westerman, journalist and writer from Holland, and Anders Gustafsson, Leopard förlag. Thank you. A big applause. <laughs> yeah. Welcome to Sweden, Frank. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That was a good start. Uh, well, Frank Westerman, you uh, have written seven books. They've been translated into 15 languages so far. And uh, in this book, Dödens Dahl in Swedish, uh, you tell a, a story about a disaster that took place in a, in a remote valley in, in Cameroon in 86. Tell us, what happened there? Yes, we go back almost 30 years ago to Western Africa, and it's a true story. So from one day to another, in a valley quite remote in Cameroon, all life, life from animals and humans was wiped out. And it happened overnight. Uh, it's, not a, it's not a fiction book. Eh? I'm talking about a real story. So 2,000 people, almost 2,000 people, died on the spot and their cattle, and the chicken, and the insects, and the birds. There was no life in over 18 kilometers of a valley in, 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 in Cameroon. And there was no destruction. So there was no trace of, uh, of what had happened. Just the human and animal life had died that night. And um, this, is, this is the starting point. It's not my subject, it's the starting point. I had been uh, fascinated about it because I remember the evening news. Uh, I was a student then, and there was one picture f taken from a helicopter, and you saw a white, almost a confetti, of dead cows on a green slope and what struck me most was that the evening news presenter she said we don't know normally you watch television for the news and you get information and this time she said nobody knows what happened but there, there was a lot of uh, was, you, you could say that uh, a scientific race followed who were the first, to, the first people to, to go into this valley and what well, did Anders, they find? The, the, the whole event triggered, yes, a scientific rat race, almost a rat race. Because from France, from Iceland, from Japan, from Germany, from Italy, from the United States, scientists tried to reach the area and try to be the first to explain. But apart from scientists, you had, of course, the government of Cameroon sending in the military. You had journalists trying to, 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 to grab the first flight and to be the first. ABC television went with a whole crew, Japanese television, everybody went there. And uh, what is so fascinating to me is that um, quite after a while, maybe some weeks, weeks, we're talking about weeks, there was a variety of stories coming out. Not one, but more than one. There were scientists, yes, but they did not come up with one single satisfactory uh, explanation. Um, and then I decided a little bit later I was young, I, was, uh, I, w I wanted to become a journalist. I decided to, to go there for the radio. I made a radio reportage, and the main question was, what happens? Well, this was five years after it happened, in 92, and for this book, it's written now. I went back with a different question. My question was not anymore what happened during that particular night, but what do people tell? What kind of stories have emerged over the, the past 
25 years. So my book is more about uh, what is a story? How does it originate? Uh, I still think it is a mystery of what happened. There are many stories, many explanations, many theories. Can, but you, I can love you tell us a little bit more about uh, the scientific? Because two schools emerged, two different yes. sort of explanations for this disaster. Even as we speak today, there are scientists that are investigated what happened. Uh, quite a lot. There are Japanese, French, and American scientists that come and go to this particular area. The Cameroonian military is already 30 years stationed at the Death Valley. It is an area that is cordoned off. You cannot enter. So the 18 kilometers uh, has been taken over by nature. Uh, there are trees, there are, but there are nobody, nobody is living there. But the scientists come. And even today, they quarrel in, among themselves. Uh, to the extent that uh, if you look at the French Wikipedia page on this particular event, mm -hmm. you get a different story than if you look at the English language Wikipedia page. I'll give you one more example. National Geographic, the well-known popular science magazine, has made a reportage about it. And you see the picture of the cows and the green slope, and you get the story of the Icelandic American scientists. Now, in France, you have a similar magazine. It's called Geo. It uses the same photo. It's also popular scientific. And it gives you the French-Italian explanation of what happened. So this is only the scientist I'm talking about. But the scientists haven't come up with one sing uh, singular uh, satisfactory explanation. They are fighting each other. It's, like, it's about reputation, it's about jealousy, it's about pride, it's about ego. Uh, and there is not just two people involved, it's like, it's like dozens of them. And also there's a, a native myth, actually, that precedes that something's going to happen in this particular place. But also, what are the myths that, uh, that occur among the local people, among the... Uh, well, the people that, the that, that suffered. Uh, so if you going to this particular area in Cameroon, um, there's a local chief with the status of a king. He's called the Fon. And the Fon is over 90 years old. And he lost half of his people in the valley. Half of his... It's a, it's a, it's a chief of maybe 6,000 people, the FOM, but he lost 2,000. And there were many, many, many stories, existing ones, in the oral history that had something to do with mass dying of people. There were at least six existing stories that if you read them well, it looked a little bit like what happened. So where do these stories come from? How do stories, in the first place, how do they get born? And what I try to do, I try to collect the existing stories and I try to listen to the new ones. And they merge in a, it's a fusion. It's traditional but also very modern. There are theories that the French planted a bomb and they wanted to test a weapon. And they're still coming there and measuring the after effects. They are the perpetrators. They did it to us. They tested a bomb. It's a modern story. You can say... Uh, 
It's a conspiracy theory. Fine, it's a conspiracy theory. Yes, but what is a conspiracy theory? Why does it? Why is it so successful? Uh, what do the people try to convey with their interpretation? So, what I try to do in the book is actually I try to to dissect all the new stories that have emerged from the missionaries, from the scientists, from a local playwright, from the chief anthropologist of Cameroon who had to investigate, from all kinds of people, also the, 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 the family members of the survivors. They have their, and after 25 years, you see the first patterns of a new myth maybe many, uh, and, and as a writer, I was trying to hunt for the very, very, very origin of stories. And I tried to understand why we tell them, why we need them. Uh, the book is cut in three parts. It's about the killers of myth, the bringers of myth, and the makers of myth. And I have the conviction that we're all creators, makers of myth. And that even if it's true or not true, that the necessity of coming to terms with a disaster, with a mystery, with something we cannot understand, uh, the necessity of telling stories and creating new ones is, uh, is, is essential to, to who we are as humans. We do it, not Africans, we all do it. We all as humans need um, uh, not only interpretations, we need consolence, we need meaning, we need uh, maybe political pressure, um, so all these, 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 these elements are in a way created by creating stories. And what, what do they do from a sort of official uh, Cameroon? How do they uh, uh, deal with this mass death? Well, there is a president and the president is already there for 40 years. He is considered to be a mild dictator. It depends on how strongly oppose you, um, you, how strongly you oppose him, how, how you would judge him as a dictator. So he is, he is a dictator. But he considers the province where it happened as opposition as a threat and this has to do with the colonial heritage because Cameroon was partly f it was in the first place a German co colony a century ago it was divided after the first world war between French and English so you have an English speaking part of Cameroon close to Nigeria and it happened there so the English speaking community has created one story saying our dictator, the French-speaking guy, has sold us to the French or Israeli to test a neutron bomb. So the conspiracy theory is spinning against him and the scientists and the French and the Americans. And the, so this is one particular story. But... Uh you were, you were there a second time when it uh, was 25 years after this disaster. What, what, did you meet some reaction from the authorities or did they keep this memory alive? At some um, look, I was in the fortunate position to compare what people told me when I was a radio reporter, 92, five years after it happened. And I went back and I met the Fon, the king again, the king who lost his people. I met the missionary again, the same people that 
try to console and to comfort the survivors or the family members. I also met the authorities again. And they had a very cynical approach. Actually, they had the scientists come and come and come and come. And they tried to play the, the, the scientists who disagree. Uh, to play them against each other in order to get more and more funding. In order to say, well, we still don't know. Look, this scientist is telling us this story, but we have another one. And ever since, they have tried to, um, to upheld the contro controversy, controversy and to recreate the mystery. So they play their game too in order to generate more income. It's very cynical. Fascinating. Uh, you've, been, uh, you've been compared to uh, Kapuscinski and uh, Bruce Shatwin. Uh, I'd like to ask you uh, what, uh, what authors inspire you in your writing? Definitely uh, Kapuscinski and Shetvin is, uh, are where authors that I read and I feel uh, embedded. Uh, um, uh, in, uh, what, is it? what do you say? Uh, I feel I owe them. Uh, but today I also, I don't know if you, if you in Sweden read the work of Emmanuel Carrer, the Frenchman, or the Spaniard Javier Cercas. Uh, I don't know if you know him. Uh, I like the way of um, the narrative, the reportage, um, trying to, st to, to, to tell the story and at the same time develop the argument, develop ideas, hunt for new insights. Some call it essay by reportage. I don't like the... I don't like to lecture. I like to tell. And what I try to do is, uh, is, is follow the real story. And yes, it is non-fiction. I didn't make up the story. But the story itself has a great deal of fiction. So I feel like I'm analyzing all kinds of fiction because I don't believe that the French planted a neutron bomb. But I do take serious why people tell this story and how they tell it. Um, so you can say this is a book on the origins of stories, on the origins of fiction, but the book itself is non-fiction. And uh, one uh, last question for you, Frank. Uh, what are you working on right now? What will your next book be? Um, but, uh, uh, right now, the last book I've published is about uh, Srebrenica, the fall of Srebrenica, and it had to do with the Dutch involvement uh, in Bosnia in the war uh, you know that the Dutch blue helmets the United Nations they were from Holland and they had to protect in the enclave in the Bosnian war uh, more than 40,000 refugees that were encircled by the Bosnian Serbs and we know what happened um, so I wrote a book about the fall of Srebrenica and um, the failure to protect uh, seven to eight thousand of them who are now in the mass graves and whom we remembered uh, last July because it's 20 years ago. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, thank you. Tack, tack. Uh, om ni vill köpa boken så kommer Frank vara här och, och signera den. Det kostar 200 kronor idag. Uh, tack för oss.